Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining me. Uh, this is Alonzo Trejo Mora, a part of the VMware Solutions Engineering team. And the focus of this discussion today is going to be vRealize Operations Installation as part of the broader area of VMware that is VMware Cloud Management. Now, in order to perform this installation, specifically an on-premise installation of vRealize Operations, there are really four key areas that we're going to be focusing on. And the first is interoperability, doing our homework ahead of time into uh, the fact that vRealize Operations needs to be compatible with certain versions of our VMware portfolio, and we want to make sure that we check that out first. The next part is VMware documentation. What documentation is out there, not just for our initial installation, but for ongoing use and management of the tool. And secondly, thirdly, uh, the installation of the software itself. And finally, the configuration of that deployed software for the usage in our and for our purposes, a small scale, single site environment, ballparked at about 300 virtual machines or less. Now we have a blank environment here, five hosts, vCenter managed, as mentioned before, single site. And where we will do our download is actually in the customer connect portal, customerconnect.vmware.com. The binaries for VRIs operations, here is where it will appear. Specifically, we go to the infrastructure and operations management section and view our download options, the license gets inserted into uh, the, the Realize Operations or typed into Realize Operations during deployment, and we will see that happen. I don't think this file uh, is different uh, depending on which version you pick here. Our focus will be Operations Manager, specifically the appliance installation. We see that Firefox doesn't allow nested viewing. That's okay. If we wanted to see the EULA, we could open it up on a separate page. We can agree to those terms and begin our download for our file. Right off the bat, one of the things to notice, 2.6 gigabytes in size, and it is a .ova extension file, or OVF. And meanwhile, we see here our environment. If we right-click on region A01, we have the ability to deploy an OVF template. First, however, we will want to make sure that DNS is properly configured for our Realize Operations appliance. So we've allocated, a, if I, we've allocated a given IP address for Realize Operations, which a static IP address is heavily recommended, then we can associate that with a user-friendly FQDN, like VROps-01A. Looks like our download is completed. So what we can do now is deploy our actual OVF template into our environment. We'll make sure it's a local file that we see that we could have a remote or a URL to a remote server housing our OVA as well. We'll give this virtual machine the name VROps-01A in accordance with our DNS records. And this is specifically for inventory as well, where it would be located have enlarged ESX-04A for the specific purpose of landing vRealize operations as an appliance on that host. If you did have your vSphere environment with DRS as a capability, you could pick the compute cluster and it would pick for you. We can review the details and one Immediate thing to point out is the big difference between picking thick provision versus thin provisioning on our disk. We do have the ability to thin provision. Uh, otherwise, if you would want to do thick provisioning, uh, you will require 274 gigs. Uh, thin provisioning uh, up front, one gig. Uh, so depending on your storage needs, that could be a, a very different answer for you. Check our licensing agreements again for our deployment. And here is where we select our size. Now, there is a lot of helpful information here on the right in terms of what a size corresponds to ballpark in terms of virtual machines and how much that given deployment appliance is going to need for that size and CPU and memory. This is where, for instance, if we wanted to check our sizing and scaling knowledge base article, that is one thing that we could do to better inform us of what decision to make. We will use the extra small size. Next, storage, and here's an important point. If we were to select the storage, select our option, and then click out of the storage and reselect it, it resets back. So just an important note here, select your storage first and then select the virtual disk format. 
For our network, we will pick the management network, which for us is ESXi region A01, specifically a virtual distributed switch. And here is where we customize our settings, including uh, supply the IP address for the gateway, our default gateway, our DNS, uh, the IP address of the of virtual machine itself. As I mentioned, dot one thirty will be my particular uh, selection. And in this case, we could also do um, we could also add if we wanted to a, a different time zone. An important thing is I would recommend leaving it ETC or, or UTC. The reason for this is it makes it easier for logging. Uh, typically, it's just a more universally accepted time zone. So in this case, I'm going to leave it as ETC. Default gateway. Domain name, in our case, corp.local. We need servers. So we review our information and click finish. Now as part of our recent tasks, we'll see the importing of the OVF package, deploying of the OVF template. Some ask, well, at what point do you experience these issues with your OVF being corrupted during download in Chrome? Why, why is this in it? Where does it come up as an issue? These tasks would fail as a result uh, and have failed for me as a result if the OVF download is corrupted. So this would be the step in which I would see issues. This takes a little bit of time, and so I'm going to go ahead and pause recording, and I'll see you in a quick second. Okay, it looks like we're just about done. Excellent. So our virtual machine has been deployed, and we see it now in our vCenter inventory here, visible. And since we've configured DNS, let's go ahead and turn it on. A quick note for these installation scripts. There is a point within the tasks where you may see, uh, and uh, it, it might or might not show, that one of the tasks, an LSB initialization script, may show up with a failed error. Now, this does not necessarily mean uh, that your app appliance uh, will not work or that there's anything wrong with the script. Sometimes some tasks just try to run before others uh, during this process. So in case you do see that failure issue on one of the tasks near the end, just know that that might not necessarily mean there's anything wrong with your actual appliance. I'll try to call it out if, if I do receive it in this installation. However, these scripts we see will take a little bit of time, so I'll go ahead and pause the recording again. Everything has been green, and we see that one error, in fact, a couple for the same error, and, and that is the, the one that I wanted everyone to see is uh, an error, but once we actually go ahead and configure the various operations appliance, uh, we'll see that that actually does not play in our remaining usage of the platform. To manage your appliance, please browse to HTTPS 192.168.110.130. And on initial installation, what we'll see in a moment is that it actually redirects us to the admin section of your realized operations, not 192.168.110.130. That 130 slash UI, but actually slash admin. And that's because we haven't actually configured our realized operations cluster. We see that we're greeted with three choices express installation, new installation, and expand and existing. I must always select new installation. It is not much more information than express installation and allows us to do additional things, such as define our NTP server IP address as well as our certificate if we have one. So I'll go ahead and choose this for this session. A helpful initial visual of what we're going to be doing. Click next. And set our account credentials for our realized operations when we decide to log in. Then if we wanted to, we could install a certificate. In this case, we'll just use the self-signed or default. As well as our deployment settings. So here we can establish our NTP server address. Looking at here and our master node name. So, for instance, we could give this the name VROPS Control 01A. 
If we were to configure availability, this is where we would do so. And just for a quick second, so we can look at the descriptions. High availability would be effectively an allocation of resources such that if Virilize operations were to go down, we could automatically create a new uh, instance of Virilize operations to pick up with as little downtime as possible given a failure. Continuous availability, on the other hand, is uh, more uh, more resource intensive, we'll put it that way, on the network on your uh, resources. However, it synchronizes the data across two fault zones, fault domains, where you have nodes on one domain and nodes in the other domain. And so it will effectively be replicating the information across such that if a catastrophic event were to happen and one fault domain were completely down, you have a copy at your other domain to continue working. For this purpose, we will not be configuring availability. We are just going to deploy one node. Here's where you may add additional notes if they were existing. So we'll go ahead and start. And this will take some additional time. So I'll pause the recording again. Now I'll pause the recording now while it's initializing. OK, our initialization has just finished. And we were immediately redirected into now 192.168.110.130 slash UI slash login. So a different section of your eyes operations where we can finally log into our appliance and start configuring the environment itself. Before we go ahead and do this, though, let's also verify that DNS is operational. And we do in fact redirect to the UI as well. So that is a good sign. DNS is working properly. And so we can go ahead and use this for the rest of the configuration. Here are the credentials that I specified on the initial setup of our appliance. And so we're greeted with an initial setup here for accepting our EULA, and if we have a product key, inserting our product key for a particular edition, number of CPUs or OSIs uh, that we've purchased for our environment. So we will accept the end user license agreement. In this case, use our evaluation key. If we had a product key, we could go ahead and put that there, as well as validate. And join the customer experience program, sending telemetry back to VMware on what does and does not work. And now we are greeted with our 8.6 interface. On first installation, on first opening, we even see that it asks, well, begin monitoring your environment by adding your first cloud account. Would you like to add a cloud account? I say yes. And we also have some tutorials at the bottom, as we saw. But first, let's configure our vCenter deployment. I'll give it the same name that we have for its FQDN, vcsa-01a. We'll provide here the credentials for that vCenter. That's enough. If we were to use a separate uh, account here that, that didn't have full admin access, yet we wanted to add an additional account for performing actions such as resizing or deleting of infrastructure virtual machines. Uh, one way to do that would be to add this additional account of credentials with those kinds of uh, more uh, destructive, so to speak, capabilities, or uh, another way to say it is um, more elevated permissions on our vCenter environment. And a not optional step uh, for our connection to our vCenter is to validate the connection. This is actually what is going to allow us to accept the certificate with our connection to vCenter. One other thing uh, that I did want to make sure uh, to point out is we noticed that our blue appliance here, our actual VROps virtual machine, uh, has a login uh, option here. If we go ahead and do that and type root, here is where we'd actually set up a password for our appliance. I have run into cases when being requested this where it will just ask for a password with no indication of there being a, a, an old one or anything like that. Uh, sometimes it might just you might just need to go further into the process of cluster initialization, uh, exit out of the, the web console that you currently have open and open up a new one. And, and typically that should open up to a, the prompt for a new password. However, most users will not have to interact with that. Right? We, looking at our UI console, 
uh, one of the ways that we can start seeing if we're collecting data is simply typing or searching for our different objects. We get a different view. So from the vCenter's perspective for assets under management, we see our five hosts, two virtual machines, effectively our vCenter, vSphere inventory. And as we add more integrations and management packs, we could get those as well. In addition, if we wanted to see where those raw metrics actually are and what those values are, we can check here for, for instance, demand percentage. So we get some initial values here for CPU, uh, as well as uh, additional options in our metrics section and relationship mapping from vCenter to the rest of the environment to get a nice holistic view of our infrastructure. Right, and then depending on your screen size, right, mileage may vary on, on uh, the, best, the best way you want to fit this or, or consume this information. Uh, but effectively, this is uh, how you can start getting a very detailed view on your environment to implement root cause analysis. And as mentioned, this would be for our vSphere objects specifically out of the box. Uh, we can add additional uh, public cloud, for instance, services uh, in uh, application level uh, monitoring and, and processes, uh, as well as even go granular with uh, the dat databases and uh, switches. Uh, there's a lot of extensibility options. As mentioned, one great way to get a lot of those uh, off the bat is the True Visibility Suite. And in terms of added enablement and engagement, right, there is a Verilize Operations Sample Exchange, a ton of information on YouTube, a lot of information via VMware Docs. Uh, and so with that, there is a very mature ecosystem when it comes to Verilize Operations added learnings. In addition, if you did want more formalized training, VMware does offer education for Virilize Operations certification or just overall install, configure, manage knowledge. And uh, through that, if, if there were any needs to integrate with additional products, implement a very complex use case, uh, we typically have the good resources, very good resources in order to do that. Uh, I hope that this has been informative. I hope it's been helpful. And uh, most importantly, I hope that it has been reproducible if you are considering this as part of your environment. Uh, my name is Alonzo Trejamora, part of the VMware Solution Engineering team. And I always welcome any and all feedback, whether it be on this channel or at uh, my email, uh, atm8119 at gmail.com. Feel free to follow me on LinkedIn, Alonzo Trejamora. And without anything else, thank you for tuning in with me and hope you have a good rest of the day, as always. <laughs>